Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us for this webinar for the Animal Logic UTS. Sorry, the UTS Animal Logic Academy webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the, uh, master's uh, degree and graduates in demand. Um, so appreciate you all coming and joining us. I just take a look at the attendees. I think oh, we've got a good amount now, so I think we're ready to to kick off. We'll get going. Um, okay. Uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Um, just to let you know that we'll be recording this session tonight. Uh, it will be sent to you. It will be. We'll send you a link after the end of the session, so you can uh, rewatch this uh, later on. Also, we'll be uh, pointing towards some links and some info over the course uh, of this session uh, that we'll send to you in that email as well, so you can get access to it uh, later on. So no need to kind of like hurriedly write down notes, you'll get this later on to rewatch at your leisure. Brilliant. So we have a great panel here for you all today to talk about uh, to talk about the Academy. Uh, first of myself, Alex Wayne, I'm the uh, creative lead here at uh, the Animal Logic Academy. Uh, we also have Dylan Neal, who's our VFX lead. Uh, Dylan, you there? Sure am. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Uh, Dylan's just joined us this year as well. He's um, uh, for both of us actually. We're both fresh out of industry, and, and this is our first year. Uh, we also have two ex uh, graduates joining us too. We have uh, Alicia and Ian, who are both. Alicia is now working at Flying Bark, and was a 2018 graduate. Hi, Alicia, are you there? Hello. Yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alicia. And we also have uh, Ian, who's now at Lumen Pictures, who is a 2019 graduate. Hey, Ian. Hi, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Fantastic. So um, Alicia and Ian are going to be answering some questions for our, of all yours as well, but also talking a little bit out about their first-hand experience uh, at the Academy and also about how they transitioned into the industry and um, you know how this sort of helped them uh, make that leap. So just go over what the agenda will be for tonight. So we will do a quick overview of the Animal Logic Academy and the uh, Masters of Animation and Visualization, we call the MAV. You'll hear us talk about the MAV a lot, so that's what it stands for. Um, then we'll have a discussion uh, with Dylan, Alicia and Ian, and then we'll open it up to you. And, and really that's the, uh, uh, that's sort of like the big part of tonight because I know you all have a lot of questions about how it's run. You might want to ask uh, Alicia and Ian about their experiences as well. So um, what I'd like to do is get through the overview as quick as we can so we can get to those questions and conversations faster. And then at the end, we'll have some information about how you, how you can apply and um, a few other links to, the, um, to some of the works at the Academy as well. Great. Um, okay, so there is a Q&A button at the top, oh sorry, at the bottom of your screen uh, where you can um, where you can ask some questions. I encourage you to ask them uh, throughout whenever you want. And also there's a cool little thing, if you give uh, someone's question a thumbs up, if you're interested in it, it naturally floats the more popular questions to the top of the list. And they're the ones that we can answer first. So the popular ones that apply to everyone uh, will go to the top. Um, so, you know, feel free to read through what other people have asked as well, um, because I know there's a few of you today and we'd like to get to all your questions, but maybe someone's asked a question that you want to know as well. That's going to help us, help us too. Fantastic. So we are going to kick this off with a quick poll. Um, you can just add that there. Are you interested in studying the Master of Animation and Visualization or the MAV in 2021? And we do ask this because it's great to get a sense of how many people want to apply. It also uh, lets us know really about the scope of the projects that we're working on. Um, actually, Alicia, Ian, how many students did you have in each of your years? I'm not quite sure. Um, well, so I, again, I was the 2019 class. We had yep. about 27 um, all up. Okay, okay. And Alicia, how many in yours? Oh, so in 2018, we had 26, so 26. one shorter. <laughs> one shorter <laughs> All right. Million. Well, um, I mean, look amazing. This year we actually had um, 44, so it jumped up quite a lot this year. 
um, which is great. And it, it meant what it meant was that um, the scope of our project sort of increased a bit. So this gives us a sense of how many people hopefully are joining us next year. Um, fantastic. Okay. So then we have one more poll. Have you attended any UTS Animal Logic Academy webinars previously? Um, because we can sort of tailor things a bit as well. Um, because it gives me a sense of how much of the MAV and the details that we'll go over. Oh, okay, great. It looks like there's a lot of first timers on this, which is fantastic. All right, so we will go over and clarify a lot of the info of how the MAV runs. Um, fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. So, Master your career in animation and visualization, graduates in demand. Um, so you'll hear us talk about that a lot at the moment, that the graduates are in demand, um, and that is a big thing uh, that's happening in the industry nowadays. And the reason why um, uh, our MAV was created was to be a place where graduates can learn, whoop, sorry, I'll just go back, back one where graduates can learn about uh, how to sort of operate in an industry industry uh, industry uh, environment. So it's, uh, it's very different than a standard sort of um, uh, university degree in that our, our students are working together on a project and it does replicate how an animation studio or a game studio works. Uh, so we are industry focused. We do have a lot of collaboration between um, people and other other companies uh, in industry. Um, we also created this so students get a, um, a sense of working on a pipeline, working collaboratively. Um, you know, as I'm sure Ian and Alicia will tell you later on, it's the difference is that you all work together on one project, like you would if you go to Animal Logic or a Flying Bark or ILM and so on, rather than just going off and working on your own, you know, on your own project, which is, you know, a great way of helping our students and our local talent grow as well. Um, we do want to help develop and strengthen our local, local talent pool because um, I don't know if uh, many people saw, but there was a great article just that came out recently about the growth of the animation industry in Australia. And there is a real need for, for animators, um, not, sorry, not just animators, but, but digital artists across the entire field to help create that content. and we need people locally to, to help fill those positions. And traditionally in the past, it's been actually quite hard to get, uh, you know, all the people that we need uh, into those companies and places within Australia. And considering that there's uh, quite a big, uh, quite a lot of tax incentives at the moment from the federal government uh, uh, implanted into the, into the film industry, uh, we need local talent to help those companies get those tax breaks. So um, it's a big part of why the Academy was created. Okay, um, so, sorry, here we go. So a difference, one point, uh, there's a few kind of uh, uh, differences between our course and other, other masters. Uh, as usual masters is, is around a sort of a year and a half. Uh, ours is a one year accelerated masters. Uh, so we can press it all together. Uh, it's done very, you know, it's done, it's, it's an intense year, but it's a fun year. It's, um, it's nine to five, five days a week. Um, and that's how we can kind of get away with that. So it is like being on a job, but it does, again, help sort of replicate that, uh, that environment. Um, Alicia, how did, how did you find going to a sort of full-time nine to five kind of study experience coming from uni? Yeah, it was really good. Um, going through MAV um, really helped me understand what a studio-like environment was meant to be. Um, because before I was um, working as a motion graphics, you know, video animator. Um, but I never got that sense of actually working in a studio environment with other people, like a large um, company. So the MAV really helped me, you know, nine to five, going in every day, um, working with other students. It actually felt like you were working in the studio. And even in the studio I'm working at right now, it essentially was the map back then. We're doing the same stuff that the map is and even the same programs really that the map is even using. So being able to go from MAV to where I'm working now, it just it just went in a straight flow. It just assimilated with it. There was like really no different jump. It wasn't like a large jump where like, oh, 
I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to approach a person or the map really like really helped me understand how to grow in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Good. Well, I mean, I mean, that's great to hear, Alicia, because it's pretty much yeah. exactly why the um the the academy was built up to to really replicate a studio environment. You know, it's it's and the studio itself is very cool. Um, um, as well, it's it it looks like and is set up like a you know like an animation studio. The students are separated into their departments, whether it's effects or animation or design or modeling or rigging. Um, so it, it does kind of, you know, you are in that similar workspace that you go to an in industry. So it's great to hear you found the transition easy. Fantastic. Um, so it is a collaborative environment. And that's another thing that uh, we found that's a point of difference with us and other universities as well is that uh, traditionally, you know, at high school and at uni, you are given a project and assignment, you go off and you work on it, uh, either on a group or by yourself and come back and present it later on. Whereas in industry, uh, everything you do is collaborative. Uh, your communication, your feedback, uh, your dailies, you know, work is looked at every day, no matter what stage it's at. Um, and that's something that it's really great to get training in. So you, so when you do go to work at an animation studio, you're used to that process. And it's something that we do replicate at the MAV as well. Um, we are industry led, which means we replicate what industry is doing. We're not kind of beholden to a specific set of software or tools or processes. We reflect what industry is doing. So uh, at the moment, you know, the, we're doing sort of our effects in Houdini and, you know, animation rigging in Maya and uh, sort of surfacing in substance. Uh, but as Dylan, I'm sure I can tell you that there's, you know, becoming more interest now in Blender. Um, and so, you know, we're looking at incorporating that as well into the, into the MAV too. So we're always going to be reflecting what industry is doing. So we're not, you know, we're following them exactly into, you know, into, into matching what they're using at the moment. Um, and guest speakers, uh, which is great because we're so sort of connected to these studios in Australia. Uh, we do get a lot of guest speakers that we cut, that we call in from these companies around, around Sydney. And uh, even at the moment, because we're doing a lot of things by Zoom, over Zoom as well. Um, but Ian, did you have, I mean, I know, did you, you must have had some good speakers come in for your year as well. Is that right? Any, any yeah, good had, speakers you had talk, talk? Yeah, we had a bunch of people coming in. Um, a lot of them had worked on the Lego movie and were sharing their experiences there. Um, we had some other previous graduates who had also gone on to work on films like Aladdin, um, just a really broad range of speakers and, and projects that were shared. It was really very insightful, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, great, great. I mean, we do try to, what's, what's fun is that we do try to get speakers that cover every aspect of the pipeline. So, you know, we will get people who come in and talk about modeling or, or, or rigging, then later on as the pipelines in later stage of production, we'll have them come in and talk about sort of lighting and, and coloring. Um, you know, from, we had, well, just recently we had a colorist from Animal Logic come in and talk to the graduates. Um, and before that, uh, someone come in and talk about lighting. It's, yeah, and comp. Actually, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really quite fun. Um, we do have sort of a global exposure because our graduates, our teachers and our connections are, do go across the world and also um, uh, the awards that the MAV have won are sort of recognised around the world as well. So uh, it is recognised with companies, companies around the world do know of our graduates, do know of what we do and it does kind of give them a help into stepping into those roles. Um, I'll sort of mention this a bit later on, but we do have a very, very high rate of employment for our graduates because of this. Um, the industry do love our students who come out of, come out of this course. And also another really fun part is, is um, it being able to explore AR and VR. Um, Real-time production is becoming a really big thing nowadays. Um, I know a few of you uh, would have seen the, um, the Unreal 5 demo that came out earlier in the year. And that's just amazing, you know, and there's so much that can be done now in real time in terms of um, real-time production, previews, layouts, uh, seeing what the people at ILM are doing with the Mandalorian and, and sort of real-time real -time set and stage setups. It's, it's really exciting. So we do try to kind of, we are staying on top of that as well, which is what um, part of our Studio 2 does. So we do focus, we do have, a, you know, we do focus on creative and technical. Um, I'll just talk about the creative side a bit as well. Um, as you know, an animated feature film or even a game comprises of a lot of roles and a lot of different speciali specialities. 
We do try to train specialists rather than just training generalists uh, because the bigger studios like ILM and Animal Logic and Fly and Bark do hire someone specific to that field. They want an animator specifically, um, but then some of the other companies do hire generalists, but we try to get people into those specific roles and elevate their skills up to an industry standard. Um, so everything from animation, modeling, design, art, graphics, sorry, um, 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 surfacing, you know, we cover the whole spectrum of that, of that kind of area. And we'll take your skills and, and, and really kind of push you to, to try and um, um, advance your and elevate your skills to what we will qualify as being sort of like a junior industry standard. Um, so, uh, I mean, Alicia, what did you find? Did you, coming out of before you started the MAV and at the end of it, did you find your sort of like what your, the quality of your work had increased, I guess, over, over the course of the year? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my artistic background was in modeling and surfacing and I didn't know anything in terms of the Katana um, program. Um, so that really helped me jump into learning about that program. And I learned more about like substance painter, substance designer, um, even touch on a little bit of Mari while I'm there. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, during my time at the MAV, from the start of it till the end, I've grown so much in my artistic abilities. Great, great. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, there's another thing to mention as well is that is uh, that if you are a student who comes from a sort of a uh, creative, very or a fine art background, there, there is still a place for you in the industry um, because concept artists, environment artists, surfaces and lighters tend to come with that kind of background. Uh, we do have a few students uh, this year who do come from a fine art background and are just thriving, you know, once, once obviously in the art side of things, but, but in surfacing, surfacing is really just sort of painting on a 3D model and in lighting as well, um, you know, painting with light, there's, you know, because all the same uh, abilities of, and, and concepts of, of design and contrast and composition all apply um, in those areas. It's just the tools are a little bit different. So it's good to come with those skills. You know, if you don't think you have sort of, you don't need to be like a technical person, you can come to the MAV armed with a, you know, a good creative background and still kind of find your place here as well. Um, and of course, um, there are companies in Sydney like um, Plastic Wax who are doing a lot of work in the AR VR space and for game cinematics. And, and that, is, that is a sort of another area that we're training our graduates for as well. Um, hey, Dylan, do you want to talk a little bit about the technical? Yeah, so um, technical careers, this is kind of the um, other side of the coin here. Um, the, yeah, I mean, a lot of people may not realise the sort of sheer amount of technical work that goes into creating feature film projects. Um, and so, yeah, as the slide says, all the visual effects uh, facilities have uh, entire teams who just are programming. Um, and so this, I mean, pe may, people may think of something like the MAV as being oh, just purely, um, you know, Tech, uh, creative, I've uh, got to learn 3D software and, and make things and stuff like that. But there is uh, definitely a huge demand in the industry for people with just pure programming skills. And that can be, yeah, C++, Python, C Sharp, Lua, all of those kind of things. Um, and so the jobs that kind of are you know, on offer for those kind of things are stuff like pipeline. So that's basically getting different bits of software to kind of talk together. Um, it's all, uh, you know, processes and systems to um, help everyone work together and collaborate in the most efficient kind of way. Um, and so those kind of um, applicants for the MAV, we are definitely interested in talking to as well, because uh, like I said, there's just so much opportunity out there for these kind of jobs. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's actually, I, it's some, sometimes I think it's, it's quite hard to find those TD roles, isn't it? You know, people who do have that background and do want to fit into the, you know, into the film and TV world. It's, mm. there's definitely a demand for that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess it's, it's, I suppose not, not many people really know that that's even an option. And I mean, it can be something like, well, you know, I like programming, but I don't want to just be, you know, building websites or doing databases, you know, all my life, I'd like to have some kind of input into like, you know, being in the movie industry or something like that. So yeah, definitely uh, something that's exciting to look at. 
Absolutely. It would actually be good to mention as well that for the people who sort of want to straddle both worlds, um, you know, Dylan's your guy in terms of the effects career, um, because, you know, tools like Houdini and Blender do need, you know, as someone with a mind, with a technical mind and also a creative eye. And so it's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a great kind of skill that blends sort of both the technical and the creative, right, Dylan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely use both sides of your brains to do effects. So, yeah, a lot of, you know, having a bit of a programming background definitely helps. Um, but then also you still are getting to create, um, you know, cool stuff, explosions, fire, things like that. So, yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, all right. So our team, um, it isn't just, uh, you know, Dylan and I, there are lots of people at the, at the MAV who are there to support the students. Um, so I'm the creative lead. Uh, Daniel Flood, who isn't with us tonight, he's our technical lead. Uh, Dylan, that you've just met, is our VFX lead. Uh, Ian Thompson is our head of academy. Sarah Giddy is our studio coordinator, and Naomi Q is our pipeline support uh, person. And she uh, was actually a graduate of the MAV last year, and um, did an amazing job in supporting uh, Daniel Flood and and the whole technical team on pipeline support. That um, she's come back on board this year to to help us all out. Um, and yeah, this is. You know a few of the a few of the projects that are that our team have worked on and and so really this is kind of to say that we you know dylan and i are fresh out of industry um uh, we both have uh between around between 20 to 25 years in this industry each uh, working on a range of these sort of projects across a range of companies like flying bark rising sun animal logic um um actually dylan was at weta weren't you dylan that was that was Yes, yep. that's right. Um, and look, we, we do have that connection still in the industry and uh, we are sort of keeping on in touch with the people there, with the tools, with the processes, and we're coming, coming uh, to the students with those sort of years of experience as well. So uh, just a quick breakdown on how the year actually works. Um, so in most, uh, and most people might, might be used to a, um, a four term year we actually have a three term year we call them studios uh, so studio one the connected studio is when we start we develop the short film so the students come together at the beginning of the year at the beginning of the studio and we brainstorm ideas and we come up with an idea and a concept that's going to be developed into our short film across the course of the year uh, then we carry on working on that for about three until may uh, then may we we drop tools and I know it sounds like a jump, but Studio 2 is actually really exciting because in Studio 2, the MAV is divided up, split up into groups of about five or six, uh, where they are challenged to come up with an idea revolving around emerging technology. So this could be AR, VR, a game, an experience, uh, you name it. It's really sort of up for grabs. Uh, then over the course of Studio 2, those teams uh, uh, work on their pitch on what that idea is until at the end of July, when uh, those teams pitch their ideas to a panel of industry experts. And that panel then chooses one idea as the winner and the one that we carry on into Studio 3. Uh, then in August, Studio 3, the one we're in now, uh, we finish both projects. So the whole studio, the whole cohort comes together to finish the short film and also to work on that one idea that was chosen by the panel to finish in Studio 3. So at the end of the year, uh, we have two projects that are completed and the students who want to be a bit more sort of geared towards real time or, or VR can sort of focus their attention a bit more in that area. And the other ones who want to focus a bit more in sort of film or TV or special effects can, can focus a bit more on the short film. So we do cover kind of both and it allows, also it allows everyone to get it to try a bit of, of, of both worlds as well. Um, Okay, another new thing that we are starting, uh, we're starting next year is uh, the grad certs. And basically what this is, is just a, um, uh, an opportunity for some people to just do Studio One and to leave at the end of Studio One uh, with a graduate certificate in animation visualization um, without continuing beyond that point. So it means you don't really sort of get to finish or you don't get to try at all Studio 2, which is, which is the RVR component. You don't get to finish the film, but you do get a sense of the sort of like the pipeline and how the studio runs. 
and and you know you do get to come away with it with some sort of qualifications as well. Um, but we do have limited places for that one. So if you are interested in that one, we recommend that you um, get in touch with us as soon as possible. Now, some, you know, some, sh some, some showing off. Uh, we were ranked number one globally for immersive media and mobile production excellence by the Rookies. Um, I hope you all know the Rookies because it's a great website to kind of uh, display your work for those of you who aren't in the industry and to look at what's being sort of awarded. Um, also, the Rookies gave us one of the top 10 schools in the world for 3D animation production. Uh, we also have had awards at Sagraf, the Rookies and AEAF. Um, we have a hugely high employment record. Um, so our group, we have a 90% employment record for our graduates within six months because the industry is just desperate um, uh, for our graduates because of how we train them and, and because they're basically used to, you know, working in a production environment. I mean, Ian, you, when you finished your, your, your bachelor degree before, sorry, before the MAV, uh, do, were you trying to get work as well? Or what was your experience getting work in between both before and after the MAV? Yeah, so I graduated from my bachelor degree in 2017 with honors. So uh, that Ian, we might've lost, we've lost your video by the way, just by any chance if you've, oh, oh hello. there we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I basically did four years of study and after all of that, I found I was a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none. So I, I was looking for employment for pretty much a whole year with very little substantial uh, gigs coming my way. But pretty much like after I did the math and I like specialized at animation, like and let everyone else's talents support my portfolio. Um, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. I mean, I got the interview to work at Luma about three weeks before the end of the course. The course finished on a Friday. I hopped on a plane to Melbourne on the Saturday. It was pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, look, congratulations as well, Ian. I mean, fantastic. Um, and I, I should say as well uh, that, um, let me go to the next slide because I can, well, actually, no, I'll go back. Because at the, at the moment, there is a real need um, of, of people um, who have this sort of experience and, and graduates and juniors in the industry. Um, and right now, sort of even in sort of October, we had, we had calls from some of the big companies in Sydney asking to interview our students. And they're already being interviewed now and going for jobs now, and the year's not even out. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see that happen at this stage of the year, um, uh, which, is, which is fantastic. Um, Actually, we've got a, um, you know, let's just, I'll just do one question here because we do have one question that's had a lot of sort of thumbs up um, from Sean Turner. Uh, Alicia, do you want to cover this one? Um, what type of jobs in the industry are typically, uh, sorry, a typical entry level for graduates? Yeah, sure. Um, so typically for entry positions, um, if you're either going to commercial or even like the big studios like Animal, Flying Park, or even ILM, they're, um, the positions they're looking for is either like modeling, servicing, but um, as an entry level, you tend to work on smaller things. So you're obviously working in a whole big team full of other people, like 30 people in your team. Um, so as an entry level, you get given either like a prop or even like smaller things um, that needs to be worked on. And then you can even get mentored by um, by like a buddy system where you get mentored by a mid-level um, like servicing artists or senior level servicing or even modeling artists and they can help you out. Um, but it's really good to get in as an entry level so you can really learn the ropes of how their pipeline in the studio works. And yeah, that's typically the um, entry level requirements. Um, yes. Great, thanks Alicia. Um, look, it's important as, as well to say that um, we're not just, you know, we don't just do animation and sort of effects and modeling. You know, we cover the entire range of the, of the, of the pipeline, of the pr production pipeline. So we do have graduates who have, be, who have be entered the industry as juniors, as modelers, as riggers, as surfaces, as lighters, as animators, um, you know, as effects artists, as TDs. Um, oh man, what else? Like everything, every kind of stage of the production pipeline is available to our graduates who have kind of focused in that area. So it's not just, 
you know, animation and modeling or, or animation and effects. We, we, you know, we cover the whole spread of the, of the animation in industry and pipeline. Um, here are a few of our projects that the, um, that the students have worked on over the, over the last couple of years. Um, you can see these, there's a website at the top. Uh, you can, you know, check these out online on our website. And I recommend that you do just to get a sense of the quality of the work that's coming out of the MAV. I mean, it's just amazing what, what, you know, um, a bunch of people can do when focused together on the same project. It's, it's really quite exciting. Okay, also international careers. Uh, the industry is becoming more and more global every year. Uh, 15 to 20% of our students are international as well. So we do have students attending our college from overseas. Uh, but also the other way around, our students are also leaving Australia and heading over to, to our companies all over the world in Canada, Europe and Asia. Uh, obviously, there's hubs in Canada. There's there's a lot in happening in London, in LA. Uh, France has a bunch of big studios as well. Um, so it really is an international sort of career and and, and an opportunity to grow. Uh, at the moment as well, we are in contact with with people overseas because of the ability to contact people via Zoom. Uh, but there is a you know a huge increasing demand uh, for technical artists and for juniors, not just within Australia but uh, overseas as well. Uh, so it is very much a um, you know an emerging an emerging field um, that is just getting stronger all the time. Um, that includes, of course, the game industry and VR and AR opportunities as well. So, five reasons to study at ALA in twenty twenty one. The animation, the Australian animation industry and, and visualization industries are booming at the moment. Um, as you know, uh, through the situation of COVID at the moment, it has shut down a lot of the live action productions, uh, which is really unfortunate. Um, and it's very, very difficult for those people in production, but it does mean that there's a lot of content that isn't being created. And all the streaming surfaces, everything from Netflix to Apple to Amazon, Stan, you name it, is desperately needs content to show. And so the only real sort of content that's being made at the moment is is digital animation, you know, uh, uh, TV shows, films, and so on. And so there's, I mean, it's just, it's just booming in Australia. Um, Flying Bark is just opening up a new studio in Alexandria that's, you know, pulling together three of their, um, three of their kind of satellite studios into one. And they have, they have a slate that looks like it's going to be stretching on for years. Uh, so does Animal Logic. Animal Logic has um, a bunch of movies on the cards that they're going to be creating, um, you know, over the, over the coming years as well. And they've already been desperately trying to get a hold of our graduates. Uh, the same thing for ILM. ILM just opened a studio in Fox, at Fox Studios. They're working on everything from The Mandalorian to other TV shows. And they are, you know, contacting us as well for our graduates. There's just a huge amount of work, let alone, you know, the, the kind of load of smaller studios around. Uh, uh, also, Sorry, not a smaller studio, but Plastic Wax 2 um, has a lot of work coming up as well in terms of the game, the game industry and, and, and um, cutscene area. Um, and they're just really easy. The industry at the moment is, is really booming. And it's not just now, it is that we're talking about the coming years. So um, it's a great time to, it's a really, really good time to enter now um, because it's gonna set people up or set you up for the coming years of when all this work is, is becoming available. Um, like I said before, 90% of our students find work within six months. Uh, we are number one in Australia for 3D animation production and excellence. Uh, you do learn from industry professionals and it's not just us, but we do bring in professionals from each of these companies to talk to you, like we said before. And also it's a one year accelerated masters. So we get this done as quickly as possible to get you out into industry and, and working. So uh, how to apply, uh, this will be sent to you, don't worry, on an, on an email at the uh, end of the webinar as well. But if you do go to our academy uh, website, animalogicacademy.uts.edu.au, uh, you can see what the criteria is. I recommend that even if you don't think uh, you are at this level or if you're worried about not having, you know, the, the right amount of experience or the right amount of work that you still apply, uh, because you would be really surprised with how much uh, the students grow over the year. So if you're just looking at what the output is on the website of, the, of what they've worked on together, um, you know, don't think that everyone started the year like that. 
I mean, Ian, what do you think? Do you, you know, do you, was there a big change in sort of the skills between beginning of the year and the end with what you saw the students working on? Most definitely. Um, Cause everyone, everyone had very much come from different backgrounds. Um, as I said, as you mentioned, there are people who had worked in fine arts, um, hadn't really touched any form of uh, katana or lighting equipment. And suddenly now they're just absolute pros and um, became the major um, driving force of the look development of our short film from last year. Um, that was the bounty hunter. So people would just made incredible transformations, honestly. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, you forget what it's like kind of, you know, um, when you are specialising in the one area you're interested in and just doing that skill over the course of the year, you know, how much you increase that ability over one year. It's really, uh, it's really amazing. So, you know, I, I do recommend anyone who's kind of slightly interested just to get in touch with us straight away and don't, don't sort of hesitate um, because applications are closing soon. And, and it would be great to see, you know, and, and, and to talk to you. So another thing, sorry, I'm just going to go here. Another thing before we get into the questions, but something else that I'd like to mention is the opportunity to um, have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our staff, because we can kind of talk to you about, about where you're at, what your, um, uh, what your skill level's at, what your interests are and help guide you. So. So if that is something you're interested in, but you hesitate, you're not quite sure if your portfolio real is to that level, um, definitely feel free to, to go through this process and book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us as well. So um, um, yeah, happy, very happy to do that too. So that was, that was our overview of the MAV. Um, I can see that there are some questions that are popping up now as well. Um, but before we get to some of them, uh as well i just um ask i mean alicia have you what was your kind of why did you kind of enter the map did you do what was your sort of did you go straight to was this the one thing that you wanted to do a master's degree or did you kind of try doing something else beforehand so i did um same as ian i did a um four-year bachelor's and then straight after, I was majoring in animation actually. And then straight after, I thought I would get my dream job as a look dev artist. Then it turned out it was really hard for me to get there, like very hard. Tried to get my foot in the door, but it didn't happen. And then I decided to look at like MAV. Um, it was the second year that MAV had started running. I looked at the requirements and it said, oh, um, it'll be like a studio-like studio -like environment. Um, you'll get industry connections and that was the thing that really like made me come to the MAV um, was all those industry connection. And honestly, um, without doing the MAV, I wouldn't have been able to be where I am right now um, with all the industry that I met up throughout the whole year. Um, networking was a big thing. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. yeah, great, great. Um, Ian, what, what about you? How are you finding, how are you finding kind of, uh, you know, you're there you're animating now how are you finding that experience it's definitely really cool i think you you always have that um you have to deal with the fact that you're entering as a junior so sometimes you just have to work on like you have to do some grunt work but there are always times where you get to work on something really cool and you go wow am i am I actually really here <laughs> there's, there's honestly a sense of bewilderment sometimes when i'm looking at the projects going on I'm like, what why am i here <laughs> <laughs> but um, and you're sorry you I know you can't talk about specifically what you're working on on but you're animating is that right that's correct so and I where I'm at, fine but uh, so I'm at Luma pictures uh, Luma picture and, sorry Luma pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I basically work as like an animator but also as a layout artist so we're kind of expected to multitask based on project demands right. so I and that because of the map I was definitely a lot more prepared to do layout work, which is good. Now, oh, fantastic. I uh, look at it, and that's another thing to consider as well is that when you get into industry, some people think, you know, get quite worried that oh, I've studied this one thing, I got in as an animator, and that's it for the rest of my life. You know, you can transition to other departments, you can kind of move across into other areas. You know, there is a very kind of broad area that 
once you're in industry, you can move across and try you know, a few other things as well. Um, now, we'll just go through some more questions, but I just do want to reiterate again to people who um, might not get all your questions answered today or, or you kind of, you know, don't want to ask your questions in a sort of, you know, this public for format form, uh, that you should book our, you know, book our one-on-one -on -one video consultation. Um, I believe the, the link is being sent out as well, but, but definitely, you know, if you, if you want to have a chat to us about, uh, if you're interested and you have more questions later on or we didn't answer everything for you tonight, please do kind of uh, book that as well. We're, you know, happy to, happy to have a chat to you all. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? I mean, speak, actually speaking of the, of the future of the industry, I mean, Dylan, what do you think in terms of, in terms of sort of um, effects and, and how that's, you know, how that's kind of uh, developing within, a, within Australia? Like, and do you think is in terms of like, um, you know, the real-time production stuff that, that Mandalorian's done, do you think that's going to change anything in, in effects or change the way that you approach effects? Sure. Uh, uh, visual effects, you mean? Like yeah, visual effects. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's uh, so much crossover now with this um, virtual technology that they're using for things like the Mandalorian where, um, you know, if, if people haven't heard of it, it's basically um, building real-time environments to kind of like a photo... Uh, realistic quality in something like Unreal Engine. And then they are basically not projected, but they've got giant screens that they'll put up behind the actors. And then the director can just shoot like he's shooting on a real location. And the real time background will kind of update based on the camera move and stuff like that. Um, and so that's just like come out of nowhere as another like amazing sort of exciting opportunity for people who um, you know, are interested in that sort of field of more the, the real-time rendering and stuff like that, um, but also kind of, kind of keen to be in the movie or TV series kind of industry. Um, so, yeah, that's some really exciting developments. Fantastic. Um, thank you. What I might do, actually, because um, I might stop sharing the screen so we can get... Um, so we can get our faces up. There we go. So you can see all our panelists. Um, fantastic. And we can just go through. We can just go through some of the um, some more of the questions. Um, so first one at the top here. Oh, sorry about the noise. I am just going to get rid of. Whoop. Sorry, get rid of that. Um, so where is it? So first one here at the top. Um, just wondering by Anna, just wondering if there are any prerequisites, assumed knowledge or specific ATAR needed. Um, Danielle, would you like to pick this one up? Um, no, sorry, I just I misread that. Um, so look, there are, look, I recommend going to the website. So there are a few kind of things to, to keep in mind and, and to, um, uh, to look at. There, there isn't a specific ATAR involved. Um, uh, but there's, you know, we do, there is, because we are a master's degree, it is a postgraduate, we do need um, our applicants to have a certain level of, of pass a certain level of degrees. Uh, uh, and also we're looking at your portfolio as well, but we are just looking for potential. You know, we're not, we're not expecting you to have an industry level um, uh, save real or portfolio because then why would you come to us? You know, we are looking for your enthusiasm and potential in your, in your work. Uh, but for all the specifics uh, of enrolment, I, play, I recommend that you go to the um, uh, you go to the website. Fantastic. Um, okay, another one here uh, from Justin talking about uh, uh, remote uh, work and are we going to be running the the course in the academy uh, remotely? It's look, it's a really good question, and I should talk about how we're managing that at the moment because I'm sure a few of you have the same question um, concerning how we're running things at the moment and what's going to happen next year. Um, it is a very different way of, of, you know, how we're running a studio, but um, we have been running in what we're calling a hybrid um, uh, situation since sort of March. And I have to say the students have been thriving with that. We've developed some amazing work. They've, they've really still been able to collaborate using the same kind of tools that our uh, industry uses. And we are reflecting industry because this is the same way that, that, um, you know, Flying Bark and Animal Logic and ILM are working at the moment using this kind of remote work situation. Uh, but for next year, we are looking at doing a hybrid solution, which means 
the studio is open and available uh, to all of your all of the students uh, to use the computers. Um, for those of you who are unable to make it in or, or, or are working from home, uh, our students are working our, uh, driving our computers remotely through a VPN, which means if you don't have a $6,000 computer at home, as long as you have a web, a web page and internet connection, you can dial in and you can drive our computers in the studio. Uh, it's actually pretty cool walking around the studio at the moment because there's all these ghost machines doing cool stuff on the screens, which is kind of fun. Uh, so we will be running like that, um, Justin, but as soon as we are able to, um, you know, as soon as it's safe and we're allowed to, we will be transitioning back to a full time in person in the studio. So uh, it might be that way at the beginning of the year, but um, unfortunately it won't be remotely across the entire year. We will be getting people in the studio, the students back into the studio and, and as, soon as, as soon as we can, as soon as it's safe. Um, okay, here's another one from Michael. Is artistic skill or technical skill more important? For example, if something looks good, uh, something looks good is more important than it being technically sound uh, for getting a job that is. Um, Alicia, do you want to field this one? Yeah, um, I think uh, they both go hand to hand. So if you have, for example, a immersive experience that you're working on, um, but it looks really good, but um, technically it doesn't um, match the same level as your artistic abilities. Um, it kind of wavers, um, but it always depends what kind of job you're going for. So if you are going for a artistic job, definitely hone on your artistic abilities rather than the technical. Um, and then if you are otherwise technical, you would rather focus on that. But I do find like in the industry right now, they always tend to be looking for people who have both hand to hand. So if you have both artistic abilities of um, making something look pretty or making something look good, but then also in the back end, if you can solve that problem, like technical problem solving, that's always a really good bonus to have um, because that can take you a long way further in your career, definitely. If I could just add on to that, I, I reckon one really good thing about the map is that a lot of the times in order to make something look pretty say you've made this amazing model uh, you might not be as good with surfacing but the beauty of the map is that someone else will be able to surface your work for you and you can focus on improving your modeling skills and making it more technically sound while someone else can make it more visually impressive so that you've got something amazing to show for your uh, portfolio so I think that is being able to understand where your strengths and weaknesses lie is very important. And it just, it just helps you grow at your own pace um, in the map. That's what I found. Yeah, great. Great. Look, really good, really good points. Um, okay, we've got a, another question here from Anna. Hi, what does Blender bring to the industry that some other software doesn't offer? Dylan, I think this is fine. <laughs> right, perfect for you. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a great question. Um, I mean, all different tools have um, different strengths and weaknesses. Um, but the thing with Blender, I guess, is, I mean, a lot of it is accessibility. I mean, a lot of it's quite easy for someone to just download it and learn it. There's no trying to have it, having to get a license of Maya or something like that. Um, the, the cost to studios as well, as well is obviously nothing. Um, and also not only that, but the open source nature of it means that it's more uh, customizable, especially for the bigger studios might be interested in actually diving into the source code and making it kind of work how they want it to work. Um, and yeah, so I guess, yeah, like I said, I guess it comes down to all the different tools are good at different things. A blender definitely is a lot stronger in modeling um, than other areas, but it's sort of improving all the time. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're sort of keeping an eye on, on the development of it as far as it being used in the industry. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really interesting time. For blender. Yeah, great. Um, for those of you who don't know as well, um, Dylan does do quite a few uh, blender tutorials on YouTube. Um, <laughs> they're absolutely awesome. So if you are interested, check out his, uh, his channel because um, there's some great, great stuff on there as well. Um, okay, what's, what's next, what's next? Um, from Michael again as well, which specialization is in most demand? Alicia, you wanna 
take this one. Yeah, um, so what I found, uh, what's most in demand is all the technical jobs. They're definitely in demand. Um, you, whoever does technical always gets to a job straight away. Um, surprisingly, lighting. Lighting is a really popular one. Um, surfacing and modeling, um, they're not as popular. It's a little bit hard, but now um, with the major boom in industry, um, they're definitely hiring a lot. But yeah, lighting and also all of their emerging technologies coming out. So Unreal, people who know Unreal, a lot of people are looking for Unreal artists. That's a big one now. Absolutely. I mean, look, all you need to do, um, if anyone's interested, interested, is just go on LinkedIn or do a quick search yourself for available jobs and, and tag ILM Flying Bark Animal Logic and, and you'll just see there is a huge laundry list now, you know, and that's pretty much been going on the entire year. Um, and, and you can see the, cool, the good thing about doing that as well is that not only does it show you what jobs are available, but it shows you what the prerequisites are. And so it gives you a sense of the skills that are needed and, and, you know, I can, I can guarantee you that the skills there um, are what we sort of help train you in the course of the year. And because a lot of that, a lot of the programs, a lot of the software, but also the processes uh, are something that we really help sort of develop as well. Um, worth, worth keeping an eye on. Um, okay, so here's a question from Kate. Does the course involve teaching software such as Unity, Unreal, or are you expected to teach yourselves this to integrate into assignments? Um, great question, Kate. So, Look, we, we have um, a point of difference between our course again as well is that we don't have traditional um, uh, lectures. We like to call it tasks, not tuition. Uh, in that we're a master's degree, a lot of it is self-directed learning, uh, but unlike other master's degrees where you might only have access to your tutors a few hours a week, uh, you have access to us nine to five, five days a week, which is a huge amount uh, of resource. But that being said, uh, you know, we don't hold your hand completely every step of the way. We do try and encourage you to teach yourself as well and learn on the job, so to speak. Uh, so we don't have a class specifically saying, this is how we do Unity. Uh, we encourage you to, you know, look at it yourself, try and solve the problem yourself. And then, you know, when, if you get stuck, we do, you know, we do guide you along the way. Uh, but we look, we all have experience in that software as well. So, you know, we're not coming out fresh either. Uh, that being said, um, a really good story that I like to talk about is one of our students this year, uh, Tim, um, is a fine arts student. And he came to us with almost zero uh, uh, sort of technical uh, uh, background or skills. And during Studio Two, their, their team uh, wanted to do a game about um, aliens abducting uh, sort of farmers in the Midwest in the, in the 50s. And he created a 45 second short film basically in Unreal over three weeks and it looks absolutely amazing. And he came into that with zero experience in Unreal or 3D at all and, and just kind of taught himself the skills and being supported by his peers as well. Because not just us, there's also the people around you are there to support and lift you throughout the year as well. So, I mean, Ian, did that happen to you too? Like are you, I mean, another cool thing about the MAV is that you're sort of encouraging each other and working off each other over the course of the year. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I think, oh, sorry, one second. No, like, um, there'll be lots of times when someone wouldn't know something and one of the leads would just come around, we, we'd have a one-on-one, -on -one, they'd point us to certain links that were useful. So it, it's, it's definitely a, a mixture of like, it's not just like, oh, go, go completely fend yourself. There's definitely a lot of guidance to say, okay, here are some helpful ways, helpful things to look at. Um, and especially with the, the people who are on the effects team, um, they have plenty of help from the previous creative lead mm. to focus and like so solve specific problems as they came up. Um, but definitely given the resources to, um, learn for themselves at the same time. So it's, yeah. it's a nice blend. Yeah, look, I agree. And something that I've noticed as well, and there's a real big difference between creating something and working on something in a big collaborative group environment. Nothing is hidden. You know, you're not working behind closed screens. So anytime anybody does something, it's out there, it's up and open, it's on the screen, it's, you know, it's being presented and shown. And everyone's really, you know, it's great. It's great to kind of lift everyone up. Everyone loves it and talks about it. And, and I mean, how did you find that, Alicia, coming from sort of uni to this sort of environment? 
Oh, sorry. Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> How did you find, I mean, you know what it's like working at the MAV where everything you do is now presented to the whole cohort. It's not just hidden away, just you working on it. It's something that's kind of looked at and commented on and celebrated by everyone. So everyone kind of encourages everyone to kind of elevate and get their, get their work higher. How did you find that after working at a sort of, after sort of studying at a at uni? Yeah, it was really good. Um, definitely during my bachelor's course, I, when I was doing my one year, no, four years, sorry, four years bachelor course, um, I was working primarily by myself. And then yeah. coming into the map, it was so good because um, you get to just celebrate with everyone once you do like, um, I guess the first semester was about eight weeks or three months long. Um, but creating that short all together, it just gives you like that uplifting spirit of like, yes, we did it. We created this awesome looking short film or awesome looking um, immersive experience. And it's really, it's a really good feeling um, creating something with other people um, because you all just want to achieve that one goal of making something really nice or even technically something really good to show off to people. Right. Yeah, it's really fun. Hmm. Um, Dylan, it looks like we've got another one here for you. Another Blender question. <laughs> is Blender only being used by small studios or is it slowly being integrated into bigger studios? Um, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, generally for smaller studios, um, you know, it's up to individuals. For the most part, people can kind of jump in and say, oh, you know, I know Blender, I can do this um, such and such in Blender and they'll be like, yeah, no worries. Um, for the bigger studios, stuff like that's a bit harder because of pipelines and stuff to kind of change software and things. But I think like I, I sort of mentioned in the last um, question that, you know, it has a big appeal. Like for instance, Tangent Studios who um, have kind of just gone all in on Blender basically said, well, why don't we just take our budget for, for paying for software, for whatever software we're going to replace, hire some programmers instead take Blender and then just customize it and make it do what we want. Yeah, and cool. Then, you know, and then stuff that's mm -hmm. useful to the community gets put back into uh, Blender. So yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's appealing for bigger studios. It's just getting that groundswell going. Yeah, yeah, which it seems like it is as well, which, you know, I'm hearing it pop up more and more, uh, you know, in topics and talks as well. So yeah, very cool. Um, oh, wow, we're, we're running out of time. All right, I'll try and, I'll try and grab a couple more questions quickly. Um, here's a good one from Julia, actually, talking about what's the typical career pathway for a modeler, surfacer, animator when you're five years in the industry or 10 years, um, will it just be a more specialist version of your current role? Uh, look, let me talk about that quickly because it's, it's a great question and, and something that comes up quite a lot as well. Um, generally, the, the path, and this is something that I followed as well, I came in as a junior animator went to a, you know, a mid-level animator, then a high mid-level, then a senior, uh, then a lead, then an animation supervisor, then an animation director, then a director. And so that was my kind of, that's my sort of path. And that kind of path up to sort of supervisor is pretty much every kind of department. You can become, you know, following a low, uh, a mid, a senior and a lead and a supervisor in modeling, in, in surfacing, in lighting, in animation, you name it. That's, that's the same kind of, the same kind of path. So yes, you do become a more specialist uh, version of your current role, but you also become more of a big picture person because by the time you get to a lead, uh, you're spending sort of 50% of your time supervising and overseeing uh, the, other, the other sort of workers and artists. And by the time you get to a supervisor, you're kind of not really on tools so much. You're, you're, you're more or less kind of just spending your time overseeing and making sure that the the work is up to standard. You're you're talking about you're looking at pipeline. You're looking at um, um, you know budgeting and scheduling out the entire project. Um, and you're less sort of like just looking at a single problem on box. You you leave that to your leads and your your seniors to work out. So some people I know some people who've been sort of 20, 30 years in the industry and don't want to do that. They stay as artists. You know they just they want to they love doing what they do. Uh, and then there are other people who kind of do like seeing the big picture and want to kind of look more at the pipeline and more at the overall schedule of, of the project. So there's definitely, you're not forced in one direction, is what I, sh what I should say. Um, another thing to consider as well is that most people accelerate um, or, or level up from one level to the next level in between projects. Um, so if you run a project for a year or a year and a half, 
when you go into the next project, if you're good enough, you might level up to, you know, the next level. So generally it takes that sort of, you know, five to six or seven years to become a lead and then a, you know, a decade or so to become a supervisor in, in your chosen field. So, you know, but it's, but you know what companies out there nowadays really, really they're looking for people to, to invest in, um, not just money, but invest time and skill and effort. And they really want, you know, we're getting asked for, for people who are passionate about their specific careers so they can help grow them within the industry because people are leveling up all the time in their company and they need people underneath to keep, to keep filling those positions. So, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a fun and exciting time to, to be in the industry, I think. Um, and I think that brings us to the end. I, I'll just see if we've got a um, final slide here. I'll, um, um, hold on, let's see, uh, present. There we go. Okay, the one-on-ones and that's it. But then also, oh, no, I've gone back to the beginning again. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you so much for uh, uh, for joining us here today. Um, look, and thank you to our panelists. You know what, I'm just gonna stop sharing this so everyone can see their faces. Thank you so much, Alicia, Ian, Dylan, for joining us and answering the questions. Wonderful. Um, Look, don't forget that we do have a, a couple of things to remember. Uh, please do get in contact with us if you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, if you do have any other questions, we're happy to answer them. Uh, please do apply. I would like any applications, if possible, before Christmas because um, uh, you know, it helps us determine you know, what's coming up and who's available and also gives us a chance to talk to you about your application uh, you know, if, if interested and we can give you some feedback too. The last thing to remember is that we have a showcase uh, at the end of the year on, on the 4th of December. Um, there will be, that will be sent out with the email that you'll receive, but I do recommend you, you join in and join us there uh, because we will be doing a premiere of the two projects uh, that the students have been working on this year and it's absolutely amazing. And I really, really recommend that you all come along and join us for that too. So. Thank you everyone for, for joining us. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this and hopefully look forward to talking to some of you again in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot.